That's what it is, the, the step's not there. <laughs> We're going a little short today. Welcome everybody on this 18th Sunday after Pentecost. You're gonna, you're gonna. It's hiding from me. It is, I, I was gonna do that, but. All right, readjust, okay. Uh, welcome on this 18th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, we are excited that you are here this morning, whether you're zooming in on us or going to view it later on this afternoon, but we welcome everybody this beautiful morning, and we'd like to welcome Sue Stewart uh, today. We haven't seen her in a while. It's great to have her. And then we have, of course, the pulpit exchange, Pastor Hassang and pa uh, Reverend Sung Ho uh, have exchanged, so we have the pleasure of hearing him and his message this morning. Um, opportunities coming up this week, this month, uh, check and see what you need to be going to as far as the meetings are concerned. I wanna highlight the Priscilla Circle meeting. All women are welcome to join us that evening. We meet in the fellowship hall um, and have a little program and a little fellowship. It's always fun. So all of you women are welcome to join us. The Freedom Bible Study is ongoing. Tony is doing a great job leading it, and you can join in any Sunday. You don't have to feel like you've missed anything. It's something uh, new and exciting every every week. Tony? It was very exciting this morning. Great class. Loved it. Please, come on. You, you, feel, you fit right on in. You don't have to wait. Thank you. There you go. And the Garden Potluck is coming up. Uh, there will be the string band sing-along on October 22nd at 5 p.m. Um, lots of good things going on. You can check with Cece uh, and RSVP to it. And the Recycling Reconciling Sunday, uh, there will be a guest preacher, Reverend Alyssa Swanson. Um, there will be a, uh, she'll be here for the worship and then she will have a forum afterwards at 12 o'clock. So everybody's welcome to come and join in. The upper room for November, December is available for everybody who would like to have one. Uh, the upper room uh, December has a Sunday Advent um, readings for each Sunday in Advent. So I always appreciate that because it's something that we do uh, Sunday evenings. Uh, so we do another Advent reading in the evening. So they're available in the church office. You can call Michelle and uh, pick up one. Any other announcements? Polly. I would say that if you bought any of the, sorry, UMW raffle tickets and you haven't been here the last couple weeks, we still have some unclaimed prizes. So um, check your tickets if you're here and hadn't checked them before. And 
Otherwise, we're going to have to maybe redraw some tickets in a, in a week or so. Thank you. And that's it. Um, if you went home and threw away your tickets, uh, there is, I know, John, you've got your tickets with you today. Um, thanks. We'll check and make sure. But uh, we definitely want to make sure that we get those baskets distributed. So bring your tickets. Other announcements? Then let us be in an attitude of worship. Now stand, if you will, and join in the call to worship. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Sing your praises to the glory of God's name. Great and awesome are the works of God. The whole universe sings of God's power. Gather to remember all that God has revealed. Come to discover what God is doing among us. God is faithful and just in all things. The promises of God are trustworthy and true. Present your best selves for God's approval. Work and witness without shame or pretense. Bless God, all people, and let our praise be heard. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And now if you'll join in the opening hymn, How Great Thou Art, uh, on the screen, and then 77 in your hymnals.
you may be seated and I invite young disciples with one adult from one family. Young adults, please sit down. I need help, so I, I need one adult from one family. Great. So, I have it here, a piece of paper and a pen. I want to write down name, each one of you like this. See here, I have Hesong, right? So, what is your name? What is your name? My name is Chirudam. Can you write that down for me? Yep. And do you know how to write your name? Yeah. Okay, can you write for me? <laughs> and do you? No? Yeah. Okay. And do you know how to write? Good. But and do you know? Use your, use your yeah. Do you know how to write your name? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, that's a so I'll collect all the names. Yeah, you can use this. Yeah, you can use this. Yes. So I write their names because your names are really important. Emily and wow, you can write with all those things on your hand. Yeah, you can use it. I'm right-handed. Oh, you are right-handed. Yeah, hold on. Take your time. Take your time. We are doing fine. Will. But it will. Yeah, will. Will, okay. And your name? I'm amazing that they all know how to write their names. Even though they are very small. Oh, you are not small, but you are mighty. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, now I want to see how mighty you are, all right? Great. Yeah. I would not write this beautifully. You want to write your name too? Okay. So, everybody came to church with their own names and individual identity, and we are all at church. It's okay. But when things happen, like wind blows and storm comes, see what happens. Sometimes we think, that, oh, we are in the church, so we are okay. But when wind blows, and we, so they are all staying in the church. At home, they blew away. Oh, yes. Oh, so what happened? Somebody are still in the church. But when these things happen, I said, okay, it's not good enough just to stay in the church. We have to stick to Jesus. And I have to stick with cross. So this is what I did. I stick to Jesus. You know my name? Song Holy, yeah, he's Korean. Wow. So, you read it. Now, I want you to put your name on the cross with this push pin. That's why I need a dirt. I don't want you to touch it. So, we'll get help. And you just need to, you just need to pick which prayer you want to have. There are five different choices, menus. What is this? I love you, I love you Jesus. Second one? Forgive, Forgive me, Jesus. Me, Jesus. Third one? Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Fourth one? Jesus, you are my Lord. Jesus, you are my Lord. Help me, Help me Jesus. So, which one do you want to pick? Okay. What do you want to pick? I love you, Jesus. Okay. Then you got two push pins. Two and pins. she will put you put your name on, on the cross. Where are you going to put your name? Right there. Okay, great. Good job. Good job. Now, oh, now, that's hard. okay, that's hard. That's, that's why, hard. why I use a hammer. That's why I bring adults. So I no, thought. That's why I use a hammer. Okay. 
It's oh, happen. I should have the... Wing a hammer. Hammer? I got strong hands. Wow, maybe that's a good... So, Emily, what is your choice? Mm, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, you got it. It's like McDonald's number three, right? Thank you, Jesus. So, okay, I gave two. Oh, join. Yep. Hey, go ahead. Where are you going to put it? Oh, maybe that's a good idea. We can use that too. But, now, okay. So, Will. What is your choice? Uh, I love you, Jesus. Huh? I love you, Jesus? Good, you got it. Wow. This is the very favorite um, choice. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Okay, where are you going to put your name on? Okay, Will. Great. And then, who is this? Janet? Yep, that's me. Oh, that's you. Okay, <laughs> you are busy now, so I'll ask you next time. Okay, so, Jinawa? Gianna, okay. Which one do you like? Choose. Which do you want? Help me, Jesus. Okay, you got it. Jesus will help you. Okay. They know how to pray. So you, you got help me, Jesus pin. And put it there. Now, we have, if we have 20 children, I will use up all the hours here. Janet? Oh, that's mom. So, do you have everybody? No, no. no. We are missing him. Where is he? In the yes, he was in the yeah. church. Yeah, I I saw. Sometimes the pastors, they are not perfect. It's a kind of mess up. So, yeah, which one do you like? I love you, Jesus. No, wow, I this. Help me, help me. Oh, help me. Yeah, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Wow. That's my prayer. Help me, Jesus, now. <laughs> okay. I'm messing up. I'm messing up, so help me, Jesus. Now, finally, I have a head song, but I don't know what she wants. Maybe she wants help me, Jesus. But here we have Janet. What do you want? Um, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Great. Actually, that's uh, in the scripture today, so. <laughs> that was planned. That was planned. Thank you, Jesus. Now everything is in place. Now we will see what happens. When the life storms come, wind blows, no matter what I do, how, how hard it is and how strong it is, they don't blow away. They just stay there with the Jesus, right? Yeah, so I hope that you remember today and I will give it to the offering plate when I give offering so I can pray all with you, like, help me, Jesus, I love you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Jesus, you are my Lord, forgive me, all right? Thank you for coming, let's pray together. Let's stand around this cross. You want to hold it? Yeah, I hold Okay. Okay, let's hold hands together. Make a circle, Jane, Janet, come in here, come in. Let's pray together. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us this wonderful day. 
and help us when we have trouble and be with us and walk with us all the way. In the name of Jesus, who taught us how to pray, we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now you can go to class and then learn more about Jesus. just going to share with you. I learned a new trick from my dear friend Treva. She said if you stick the to- your tongue at the roof of your mouth, it'll help you to not cry. <laughs> so, thank you Treva. Mm. Thank you choir. It was again beautiful. I got goosebumps. <laughs> ah. So, as we prepare to uh, give our, pl- our pledges and offering, please pray with me. God of love and compassion, the need for your presence in this world is often overwhelming. Confrontation and division are everywhere we look, in communities, in our countries, in our church, and in our world. We have endured much, and others have had to endure so much more. 
the Apostle Paul reminds us that if we endure, we will reign with Jesus. May the gifts we give help all your children endure in these strange and challenging times. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay, it is time for sharing our joys and concerns. Uh, Dennis, are we going to go with Zooming? Anybody have anything to claim out there? No? Okay, let's open it up to the sanctuary. Yes, Janet. I have another new um, great niece. Adela Rose was born on October 2nd. And mom and baby are doing wonderfully. Nice. Congratulations. Uh, pray for me. I'm going to see Dr. on Friday morning, 6.30, so he's going to check me out, make sure everything's okay. So pray that that procedure goes well and that, that that's good. Thank you. Well, many of you know <clears throat> one of my sons and two of our granddaughters live in Omaha, Nebraska, which is two hours earlier than the local time here. And so this morning, early in the morning, I received a cell phone call from the 402 area code and I thought, oh, I don't recognize that number. Hi, Poppy, it's Hannah. I got a cell phone for my birthday. <laughs> so we look forward to many uplifting calls in the near future. This is really hard for me, but um, I just need prayer for my family. Because um, on Monday, we were supposed to get an ASD evaluation for Will, but with Kaiser and everything happening with the mental health there, the um, appointment was canceled. And so now we have another one. So I'm trying to break through all these barriers in mental health to make sure that Will is properly diagnosed and get the things that he needs. But it's so exhausting. <laughs> and so I just need prayers for strength and patience. But hopefully we'll have answers in November. His um, support team through the schools have been fantastic. I'm just so frustrated with Kaiser right now. But I just need love and support, please. Catch 22. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I have one. I'm going to, oh, go ahead, John. You go first. Uh, just uh, keeping Katie and I in our prayers, we have a major joy in that uh, we're leaving Wednesday to see our daughter 
uh, in uh, Arizona. So pray for us. Give us a safe journey. Oh, but Olivia. Um, my daughter will be 18 months in 10 days, um, and uh, it's just a joy uh, to see her every day. Uh, and it's a concern for mom's patience every day. Um, but I'm so thankful that, um, I, that I get to um, be present and consume every moment that often is overlooked and missed. So within my frustrations of these new boundaries that she's learning and pushing, um, I also am less and joyful for the strong, smart, independent little person that is making themselves known to themselves and to me. Um, so it's just a joy to have a year and a half old. Um, <laughs> pray for daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I have one. Um, next Saturday, we will be celebrating the union of our son and his fiance, finally year and a half so we will not be here i will not be here next sunday so um just prayers for the beginnings of of new love and and family all right any others okay i will turn it over to pastor reverend sung ho to continue let us pray together thank you god for walking with us all the way at every moment and every event of our lives. A grandniece was born, gave us joy. They grow and they become one and a half years old and become independent and have their own identities. And they grow and get cell phones and call grandpa here and there and bragging that they now can talk. And Lord, and they grow and have finally have union service so that they can live together. But Lord, when we are getting older and older, sometimes we have to face hospitalization procedures, or mental health issues, and we desperately need help. So we cry out to you and cry with others. And Lord, when the time comes, we will finish up our race and we will go to meet you. When that happens, open your arms and welcome us the place that you have prepared for us. So from the time to be born and the time to move to heaven, you have been faithful to us. Ups and downs of life and joys and concerns of our daily lives. You have been with us, so we give thanks. Bless our church members wherever they are. Sometimes they come, sometimes they have to be away but make us all one. And Lord, bless our churches who are worshiping you today everywhere. Help us to praise your name in one voice. And bless our nation, our country, and make us a lighthouse for the whole world. We want to keep our moral standard, and we want to keep our high values, and we want to spread it with your gospel among all the nations so that your name be lifted up. And bless our leaders and give them the wisdom and courage to lead us in the right direction. We all will support them with prayer and our civic duties. And bless our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren wherever they are, or maybe not yet born. Make them the leaders of our country and of your kingdom and make us all one in your love. We pray this in the name of Jesus our Lord and Savior. Amen.
we share the peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. The scripture reading this morning is from Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. If you will please stand as you are able to hear the word. On the way to Jerusalem, <clears throat> Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten men with a skin disease approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? So where are the other nine? Did none of them return to give glory to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of God for all God's people. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. We have heard um, prayer requests and joys and concerns everywhere that either ourselves or some of our beloved ones are sick and sometimes they face procedures or surgeries and sometimes it's chronic and we pray for them and sometimes they get well but sometimes they passed away and during the last three years uh, because of COVID-19 so many of our beloved ones passed away also so many people have this doubt and question. Should I pray for the sick? Is my prayer working? Should I do something differently? Is God answering our prayers? And the scriptural answer to these questions is yes, yes, and yes, and yes. We need to pray. And God is answering our prayer. So I want to give you some perspective to these questions. We have to know the difference between healing and cure. Healing is recovery our relationship with God. Cure is recovery our physical health. Many times people are praying for cure. Oh, I want to be well physically. That can happen. Miraculously, people are cured. But the Bible is focusing more on the healing. Through the cure, God wants us to have a relationship with God. Now, in the scripture we read, there were 10 people who were sick. And 10 of them, all of them were cured. But only one of them was healed. That's a difference. Why 10 people came and only one was healed and nine were just cured? You know, they were all physically fine now, but one came back to Jesus and said, Thank you, Jesus. Like the teacher today picked the prayer, Thank you, Jesus, for healing me. Many times I receive many prayer requests, I pray for them, and maybe 10% of them actually came later and said, thank you for your prayer, or thank you, Jesus, and they even, some of them even give a thank you offering, <laughs> like, thank you, God, for healing us, curing us, and things like that. Because many people do not know the difference between healing and cure. In the Bible, of course, there is an 
example about a person who are cured and healed, like Naaman in 2 Kings chapter 5. If you read 2 Kings chapter 5, there is a general, army general. His name is Naaman. He is not an Israelite. He is a foreigner, Aramean, general of the Aramean army. He had this skin disease. So he was in deep trouble. And luckily, his maid, who was a captive from Israel, said, if you go to Israel, there is a prophet, servant of God. He will pray for you. And Naaman listened to the maid, little girl's voice, and said, really? Maybe he was just so desperate? Or maybe the girl was just so faithful? trustworthy. So he said, I'll go to Israel. And, and he asked the king, Oh, my master, I want to go to Israel. Why? Because there is a prophet who can cure my skin disease. I have title, honor, riches, all the prestiges, but I have this skin disease. I cannot go out. I cannot have Fellowship. You know, this skin disease, not only Naaman or these 10 people, they have to dis socially distance from other people. We all experienced that during the COVID-19, right? How painful it is. We cannot even go to see our grandparents and parents, even in the nursing homes and hospitals. We have to talk to each other through the windows. And I remember Hesong and I had to like drive through a birthday party and say happy birthday from far away and I play violin and happy birthday and we just waved and they said, Oh my nineteenth birthday, I have to do this from far away distance. So social distancing is necessary for those skin disease people, but that they feel like that they are punished. They cannot go to the community. They cannot have fellowship with the community. So they have far away. So name and even a general have riches and money and, and title and fame. But he, he had to be far away from people. Every night, he stay alone, lonely. Even though he won many victories at the battlefield, People talk about him behind his backs. How poor guy. So that was his one request. I want to be free from this skin disease. But many times people do not know what to say, what to ask. These 10 people, they do not say, Jesus, cure us. They said, Lord, have a mercy upon us because they don't know what to happen, what to do. Naaman didn't expect what to happen. The king had pity on him and said, Okay, go. I will give you a lot of gold and silver so you can bring it to the prophet in Israel as if the prophet received much money for those medical services. And he came and was directed to the prophet Elisha and the prophet didn't come out and just to say, all right, go to the Jordan River and wash yourself seven times. And Naaman was furious. Why? We have a better rivers in my country. I came all the way to this country to Wash myself in the Jordan River. How many of you went to Jordan River? Yeah, it's not even like a river. It's like a brook. <laughs> small, small, just a branch of river. And again, his servant. You know, even though they are very low in their social status, uh, they are wise. They said. Master, 
Do not be angry. He did not ask you money, gold and silver. He did not ask you to do the impossible things like walk on a nail or go through the fire, right? They are not in the Bible. I just make up. But, <laughs> you know, it's a simple thing. You just go and wash yourself seven times. What's the big deal? And I said, oh, maybe, yeah. So he went down. Okay, now you have to count. Once. Nothing happened. Then? Twice. twice. Thank you. Nothing happened. Then? Three times. And nothing happened. Then? Nothing happened. Yes, nothing happened. Nothing happened. This is a good children's sermon time, right? <laughs> but finally after seven times when he get up, his skin is clean like a baby. Miracle happened. So he was so happy. He praised God. That's the healing part. When he came out with clean skin, that's cure. But when he said, praise God, your God is the real God, that's the healing. So he was both healed and cured. Right? So that can happen. Sometimes that's why people do not know the difference between cure and healing. But, like this uh, one person who came back and gave thanks to Jesus, it happened to be a Samaritan, like Aramean and Samaritan, both are foreigners. But the Jewish nine people, Jewish people, they didn't give thanks to God. It's like entitlement. Oh. I'm God's chosen people, so I have this right to ask God my rights and demand, and God should listen to me. No, 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 no. God doesn't have to listen to anybody, right? God just answered to our prayer because God is gracious. Because I'm a naturalized citizen, I always appreciate our country, United States of America. This is the best country everybody wants to come. Even these days, many people take their risks and lives to cross over the border to come in here. Why? Because this is the best country. Uh, I read a novel called Pachinko. It's written by Min Jin Lee. It's one of the New York Times bestseller. And so I read the novel. While Hesan had two months leave, she purchased so many books <laughs> to read. Mostly just uh, not theological books, uh, novels. So one of them is Pachinko, and I read it because that like, sounds interesting. And in the novel, there is a uh, Korean woman who lived in Japan. And she keeps saying, someday I want to go to California. That's heaven. And the son always listens to the mother's song like that. She keeps saying, someday I'm going to California. That's heaven. And before she come to USA, she died in Japan. So they had a funeral service. The pastor preached that she's now in heaven. And the son thought, oh, mom went to California. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> and when I read it, I, I thought, I'm in heaven. <laughs> this is the place that some people want to come with their life. Did you know that you are living in heaven? You have so many complaints. I hear so many complaints. Our inflation, our interest rate is going up. I don't know what's going to happen. Uncertainty, wildfires, COVID. And wow, I feel like I'm living in hell. No. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we have too much. And we do not know how much we have. Some people want to have just this time. So when I went to a hospital, there was a small writing on the wall. 
The day that you waste today is the day that the person who passed away yesterday wanted to have. What is it? The time that you waste today. That's the day that the person who passed away yesterday wanted to have. When we realize that we are living in heaven, we have to find the things to be thankful for instead of complaining. So that's really healing. You know, I will give you a, an example of somebody who was not cured but healed completely, like Paul. He had a thorn in his flesh, so he prayed to God three times. You know what three means? Complete. When you pray to God three times, done. No more. Why? Because that's the Jewish tradition. When you ask Father three times, that's it. Daddy, I need a cell phone. No. I want a cell phone. No. Can I have a cell phone? No. Then that's it. You don't have a cell phone. <laughs> right? That's a Jewish tradition. That's why Paul prayed to God once, twice, three times. God says, my grace is sufficient for you. For power is made perfect in weakness. Paul got it. Thank you, God. You didn't cure me, but I now accept your will. Not my will, but thy will be done. I will have this, this thorn, and I will live in this weakness because your power is made perfect through me. Then make him humble. So throughout his life, he didn't brag about his ministry. He was always humble because he knew that God can take him away anytime. Every day is God's gift. So he said, thank you, Lord. Now he is healed completely. He did not ask cure anymore. Sometimes people are cured, but not healed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. He was healed. However, those nine people did not experience healing. They were just cured. So brothers and sisters, when we pray for the sick people, pray for their healing. Sometimes they can be cured, but even though they did experience cure and move to heaven, we know that we have eternal life in Jesus. So whatever happened to us, keep the faith. What is a faith? Faith means humility and gratitude. Humility means I'm not God. I'm just a creature. Whatever happened to me, God's will be done, not my will. And actually, whatever happened, you, we can say, thank you, God. Because you know everything, and you know the right timing. So I accept this as the best thing that should happen to me. Praise the Lord. That's the faith. So when you pray for yourself or for your friends or family, keep the faith. Healing is more important than cure. And I hope everybody experience healing while we are praying. Let us pray again. Thank you, God, for healing us. Sometimes we are physically fine, but we have this agony and stress and conflict and this hatred against somebody. And we confess that we are not healed yet. So we ask, your grace upon us and heal us. We want to forgive everybody before we pass away here on earth. 
We want to express our gratitude to everybody who show mercy upon us. And in the process, we want to glorify your name. This is our humble prayer. Accept us, have a mercy upon us. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Now if you'll stand uh, for our closing hymn, Be Still My Soul. How many verses? Uh, all of them. Thank you, all of them. Thank you, sir. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our God and the power and communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all who are healed and give thanks to God ever and forever. Amen.